Hey guys, Vladimir here with Desktop Makes. It is snowing today in Connecticut, which only means one thing. It's time to 3D print some snowflake earrings. Truth is, my wife has been asking for a pair of snowflake earrings and I really should have gotten these done by Christmas, but I've been busy printing Baby Groot, Peppa Pig, and showing you guys how to modify an STL file. So, all right, let's do this. Okay, I'm gonna move fairly quick through this, uh, but if you prefer a slower pace, uh, make sure to check out my uh, design course uh, for 3D printing, which I'll leave the link below. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna start with Sketch, uh, Create Sketch, and choose the XY plane here. Zoom in a bit so that uh, I'm working within the 10 millimeter square here. I'm gonna click R for a rectangle and start at the origin and give this a dimension of eight millimeters in height and 0 0.4 millimeters in width. Hit enter and then I'm gonna choose L for my line tool. I'm now gonna go ahead and just start uh, drawing sort of the profile of how I want this to look. I'm gonna get closer to the dimensions I want, but I'm not gonna make it exact. I'm gonna come back later and do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with my first line close to 45 degrees and then come out. Uh, the only thing I'm looking here is I want that perpendicular constraint here because I want my second line to be perpendicular to this line. So I'm going to start dragging that out and I know this, that I want this to be uh, close to 0.8 millimeters so I'm going to click again and then my third line I'm going to connect back to the rectangle and again I want that perpendicular constraint so uh, keep your eye here uh, until we see it and once I get it I'm just going to click again. Alright now we'll enter some dimensions so I'm going to hit D for dimensions and I'm going to come here and click on this line. Now notice it gives me this dimension there's two ways I can get it either um, going across here between this point and this point or if I go right it gives it to me um, between this point and this point uh, but I don't want any of those um, basically I want a dimension that takes it really uh, parallel to this line I just want the length of that line so here's how we achieve that I can actually um, if I bring my mouse in so where it doesn't show the dimensions anymore and then click if I left click it'll toggle it between that type of dimension and sort of that straight parallel line dimension which is what I want so once I get that I can just left click again and now enter 0 0.8 as the dimension I want next I'm gonna do an angle in between these two lines so I'm gonna hit D uh, for dimension and choose my first and my second line and click a third time and then choose 45 as the angle that I want Okay, so that's everything I want there. What I'm going to do now is repeat this shape down here. Um, instead of redrawing it, I'm just gonna copy and paste it. So let's go ahead and draw a uh, rectangle from right to left. Once I get that, I'm gonna go over my profile, uh, right click, choose copy, and then right click again and choose paste. Uh, that's gonna give me these arrows and I'm gonna grab the up and down one and just move it straight down. So I'm just going to kind of eyeball this into place right now. Click OK. And the only constraint I've set so far is this uh, dimension here and that degree. So that leaves me free to move this up or down or actually take this and move it up to make it longer. So I'm going to, I want the first to be short, the second to be long. So I'm going to do exactly that. But you'll notice a problem in that this is no longer connected to my rectangle. That's because these constraints haven't been set. Um, to these points and that's easy to do all we're going to do is go into our sketch palette choose coincident and we're going to go in choose our line or our point and then choose our line and we're going to do that again with the second point here and then choose this line and that will go ahead and uh, make that constraint to that line one more final thing we have to do is we see the dimension or the angle here is different from that so we're going to hit d for dimension i'm going to choose first line second line and I'm not even going to type it in, I'm just going to reference that dimension. So if I just click on it, it'll show as D4 because that was the fourth dimension that I set. And I'm going to hit enter and now that angle is also constrained. So I can move this now up or down. Um, I can extend this, uh, make it longer and that angle is going to stay fixed and it's going to stay constrained to this line. Uh, so that's perfect. That's what I want so far. Next, I'm going to hit T for trim trim this line and 
uh, whoops, I tr accidentally trimmed two lines. So let's go ahead and hit Control Z or Command Z if you're on a Mac to undo that. Um, going to do that a few times. Okay, so I think the problem there is I might, I think I had this line accidentally selected and then I hit T and deleted it. So let's try that again. I'm going to make sure I don't have anything selected. Hit T for trim. Uh, choose this line and this line. Uh, okay, now I have this as one contiguous profile I can select, uh, but I'm actually going to choose this line and hit X to make it a construction line. Uh, now I'm going to go ahead and mirror this to the other side. So I'm going to choose a selection box from right to left um, to everything besides that construction line I just created. So it all gets selected and I'm going to go ahead and choose sketch mirror and my mirror line I'm going to click on it and then choose that construction line and that will go ahead and give me uh, a nice close profile mirroring this side to this side so okay everything looks good so far so what I'm going to do is come down here a little bit uh, let's just move this dimension up by dragging it and I'm going to create a circle so I'm going to hit C for circle I'm going to draw it close to this line here um, this uh, green uh, axis line here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and start uh, to place my origin and then give this a dimension of uh, five millimeters for a uh, diameter. Hit enter and set a few constraints. So I want this um, to be kind of centered here on this line. So I'm going to go ahead and choose a horizontal slash vertical constraint. Choose my midpoint and go ahead and choose my origin there. Um, that constrains it to the center so I can only move this up or down. It won't let me move it left or right. Next I'm going to hit D for dimension, choose the origin and choose or choose the origin of my circle and then choose my origin here and drag this out. Give this a, let's go ahead and set it two millimeters um, from that, uh, the origin. Um, so that looks good and Next, what I'm going to do is just hit uh, my, uh, go ahead and choose trim again. Let's go ahead and trim these out, uh, all these lines here, so that we just have a circle and then this sort of branch coming out of it. And I can select this as one profile. Okay, so let's go ahead now and uh, we're going to uh, make a circular pattern basically of this shape. So I'm going to go to sketch circular pattern. Uh, this time for my selection I'm going to go from left to right and what left to right does is it'll select um, only things that I have fully engulfed. So all these lines uh, that are within this rectangle it'll select because I don't have the circle fully engulfed it will not select it. So um, that's going to give me these 46 items. I'm going to choose my center point and that's going to be the center of my circle and I want six of these so I'm just going to go ahead and increase my quantity to six and click OK. Now I see a problem here in that these arms are intersecting and I don't want that. Well the nice thing um, about Fusion is I can just go in actually and let's just grab that line and bring it in. So notice if I bring this in it'll do all of them. Um, so um, let's go ahead and adjust this. I'm going to grab this and just kind of bring it up and that's looking better and then maybe I can go a little bit longer in this um, just close but you know so that they're not touching. Um, that looks good. So all right that looks good. I'm going to go ahead and hit T again for trim and just trim these points over, or these lines over here where um, the circle and uh, the branches kind of come together. It's giving me a warning because it's telling me that I'm um, deleting a, uh, a sketch dimension uh, or a constraint, but that's okay. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and do it anyway. Um, I mean, this part isn't critical. You don't have to do it. Uh, but it, what I, the reason I'm doing this is because it allows me to, um, when I select this, I can just go ahead and click one selection and have a uh, one profile selected instead of um, having to individually select these profiles. Um, for some reason, it, it's kind of slowing down wh while I'm doing this. I'm not sure why. Uh, but that's all of them right there. Um, and don't let these throw you off. You'll see that there's a black line here. 
Um, that's actually just the, the dimension for this circle. See how when I turn this, you get that black line. Um, the blue lines are actually uh, the only ones that are um, actual uh, cons or lines from our uh, from our sketch. So let's get them all out of the way there. Um, I think that's everything and we can test that that's all of them because once I select this everything highlights blue so okay that's that's what I want so I'm gonna go ahead and click on stop sketch and then e4 extrude and I'm gonna extrude this up uh, let's go 1.2 millimeters and I'm gonna click OK and so there's our model of our snowflake and next I'm gonna go ahead and go ahead and create a sketch on the top here I'm gonna reference that center point and come out and give this a dimension of uh, let's see I'm gonna go uh, 3.6 millimeters um, that's because I measured the little gem that I want to put in there and that gem is just slightly over three millimeters it's uh, say like 3.2 um, and what I want to do is get that to fit in there but and I need to give it a little bit of room um, so I'm gonna go 3.6 uh, can I hit E for extrude grab that profile bring it down to uh, 0 0.6 millimeters actually I'm going to do a negative 0 0.6 millimeters so that it's a cut okay that's starting to look uh, well it actually does look like a snowflake um, so this is gonna be an earring so the final thing I want to do is have a way to actually connect um, the little airing hoop to it and I want to kind of do that in a way that's a, a sort of a most minimalistic way without adding bulk to this and the way I came up with doing that is just to uh, I'm gonna go ahead and connect these two branches that way yeah, I can just loop the airing through this section here um, so to do that I'm gonna go to sketch create sketch uh, choose this profile to draw on I'm gonna go ahead and grab my arc tool I'm gonna do a three-point arc and I'm gonna choose um, these two points here give it a little arc there and I'm gonna choose a line between here and here and now I'm just gonna stop sketch choose that and let's extrude this down so what I'm gonna do is just start dragging it down and then for a distance I'm gonna choose two and then I'm gonna choose the bottom of this surface here it's not really gonna do it so if I go to chain faces and I choose extend faces um, that'll take care of that and there we go so we're just gonna make sure one of those connect um, these may be actually a little too close that they might connect but we'll, we'll 3d print it and see um, let me just check what the distance is so if I go to inspect let's measure between this point and this point I have 0.1 millimeters uh, you know 0.144 um, if that's a problem I can always go back to the sketch uh, and make it a little wider actually why don't we do that let's just go back to sketch and let's bring that down just a little bit and then bring it up just to give that a little more of a gap that looks good stop sketch okay so let's see so we have a little more of a gap and we see it also updated this uh, which was nice uh, I was a little concerned how I was gonna handle that but that worked out great um, okay, so now we're ready to send this to the printer. So what I'm going to do is just make 3D print, choose my model, click OK, and right into my MakerBot. Let's take a look at how this looks on the bed. Uh, when you get this in there, just make sure that the side with the center extrusion is actually facing up. Um, so that looks good. As far as settings, I'm going to go ahead and just keep this at 0.2 millimeter. 10% infill looks good. I'm going to keep the temperature default of 230, which is the um, default for my replicator too. So, okay, that's it. Okay, and I'm going to print this out and we'll take a look at it. I printed two pairs of earrings on my replicator too. Just used white PLA. The beautiful thing is that this only took five minutes to print. Then I grabbed a paper clip in this block just to uh, place it in my uh, spray booth to go ahead and prime it with some uh, uh, gray primer. And then I applied a metallic uh, silvery paint to it. And you can see here, that's what it looked like when it was done. Um, next, I applied just a little bit of glue to go ahead and attach the little gem in the middle. Um, just some gems I bought at a local craft store. 
Um, I just set that into place and just held it down for a few seconds to let the glue set. Um, then I bought these little four millimeter uh, rings uh, at the same craft store, which I then attached these little uh, fish hooks to it so that you can go ahead and attach them to your ear. And here is the finished product. My wife loved them. I'm going to go ahead and upload these to my Thingiverse page where you can find me as Desktop Makes. If you print these, go ahead and leave me a comment and let me know what you think. And if you enjoyed the video, uh, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe for more tutorials.